My parents were the true definition of love. Together with my four sisters, we weren't always perfect, but we were always there for each other. My dad was king of the house. He had his five girls that basically did everything for him. He owned a gas station in South Yonkers and was always a hard worker. One normal Wednesday in October 2002, my sister picked me up from the bus stop, something she never usually does. Are we going home, I asked. Where's mom? Mom's in the hospital, she said. Is everything okay? My childhood was very different from my friends in school. While they may have come from loving families like mine, many did not have to deal with the heartbreak of losing their dad. My mom explained to me that my father fell hard. My older sister was there and called the cops. Baba is in a deep sleep and we don't know how long he's going to be there. My heart stopped. The first time we went to see him, I was very scared. There were all kinds of wires around him and a tube in his throat. Crying, I ran out of the room and began rocking back and forth in a wheelchair outside. My mom came out and sat on the wheelchair next to me. She told me she wasn't giving up and neither should I. From that moment on, we basically ate, showered and slept in the hospital just to be around him. On November 23rd, 2002, my father woke up from his coma. It was the happiest day ever. He was transferred to Westchester Medical Center and things were looking up. One day during his test, I decided to roam the hospital and see what was there. I ended up on the sixth floor with the children who were sick. I remember a nurse coming up to me and she asked me, are you visiting? I said no and explained why I was there. She took me to the playroom and asked me to pick a book and read. One thing led to the next and I ended up reading every day to the children who were younger than me. And I loved it. I felt like I impacted their lives. My father fell three months later in the hospital. He hit his head hard. His kidneys started to fail and his body couldn't handle it anymore. On July 28, 2003, I watched my hero die. I held my younger sister. I watched my mom scream. I saw my older sisters crying and I ran to the one place that made me happy. I ran to floor six. In an ironic way, this horrible situation made me want to be a teacher. So, here I am. 15 years later, one master's down, and a class where I've learned so much about special education from my peers and my teachers. I'm currently in Yonkers Public School District as a substitute teacher, and I love every second of it. I know that my childhood wasn't ideal, but it definitely made me the person I am today. I hope my father is looking down and happy with every decision I made. 